If you're in technical sales and marketing, stop what you're doing, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the five secrets to significantly boost your performance. Whether you're in sales or marketing, it does not matter. These things will be relevant. Let's jump right into it, the five performance secrets. The first one is going to be you need to get known. And this is not gonna be one of those videos where I'm like, hey guys, you need to use this system, use HubSpot. Like I feel like I've covered that and exhausted that at depth. And so with this video specifically, we're looking at ways that can make your day easier, ways that can make your job easier with the first one of being get known. Most people think it's all about who you know, and I think it's all about who knows you. Let's look at my LinkedIn network, for example. Almost 20,000 people follow me on LinkedIn. Do I know all 20,000 of those people? No. Could I remember what everybody's name is and what they do? That is almost impossible for me because my memory isn't the best. So it's not about who I know. I maybe know a very small, actually know a very small percentage of the people I'm connected with on LinkedIn and people within the industrial manufacturing industry. But it's all about who knows you. So if you can change that mindset and say, I want to do things on a daily basis that get me known to the market, whoever you're going after, what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring inbound traffic and people coming to you the more that they know you. And that's a way to kind of flip sales and marketing on the head and say, all right, I'm gonna do all this outbound activity, brand awareness, personal brand, company brand, outbound marketing, outbound sales, calls, things like that. But at the same time, what you're trying to do with your outbound is also increase your inbound. I would much rather have our phones ringing off the hook and 50 leads coming through the website a day than have to have us go out there and hunt for it. And that way we're just receiving all the inbound stuff. The only way to do that is to build your brand as big as possible. For those of you that are working for large corporations, you may be like, they already know my brand, but do they know you and associate you with that company brand? Do they know that you're the person to talk to when they have a problem? Here's the services and the things that I'm an expert in and that I can sell, but do they know that? Do they associate you with that niche? And that's where it's all about creating content. So tip it on its head and say, instead of me just focusing on outbound to bring things in, focus on outbound to get yourself known and produce content to get yourself known to kind of drastically increase your inbound side of things. The second thing is gonna be break down your goals. You guys have heard me talk a lot about goals. Set your goals huge. There's lots of experts out there that say that that's nothing that I created. Those are through books I've read and things like that. And it absolutely works. You need to look at your goals and set them to be massive, but you have to break them down at micro levels. And what I mean by that is that if you know your revenue goal, break it down to a monthly level. And for those of you that follow my content closely, this might be a little bit repetitive, but you're not most likely doing it. Look at your revenue goals, goals, break it down monthly, break it down to the deal. How many deals do you need to do to get to that goal? If you've got an activity level goal, I have to make 2000 phone calls in a month. I have to send out 400 LinkedIn connection requests. I have to do 4,000 messages on my LinkedIn through my network. I have to produce X amount of videos over a year. If you break it down into micro levels and getting it down to a daily basis, you will be much more successful with achieving those goals than if you just said, my goal for the month is to do a million in revenue, or my goal for the month is to do 100,000 in revenue. You're just gonna be focusing on that and you're gonna lose focus on what you need to do to get there if it's not broken down. In order for me to get there, I have to break it down. I need five deals at this dollar amount or a total average dollar amount on deals at this. And from an activity level, I know that I need to do X, Y, and Z to get there. So whether it's calls, LinkedIn, videos, emails, cold visits, trade shows, whatever it is, the activity level, break it down to what do I need to do on a daily basis in order for me to hit that future goal. Now, it's not from a standpoint of, I need to close six clients a day, right? Unless you're in something like a SaaS product or maybe doing B2C, you can look at it like that. For most B2B people, the deals and the companies that we deal with and the engineers that I teach and the people that we teach throughout our processes. And it's it's more about like looking at it from a monthly level. I could get one or two deals a month and close them. And that may hit my monthly revenue goal because the deal size amount is so big. Or maybe it's like, I've got to close 40 deals. So how many of, if, the, if you have to close 30 deals, that's a deal a day, but you're not working seven days, you're working five days during the week. So break it down to where how many deals do I have to close a day? If I have to make X amount of calls, how many calls do I have to make today? Break down your goals into daily level activities and that will help structure and put some guidance to what do I need to get done today? Because from at, at the end of the day, 
Most people go into work with a plan, right? I do the same thing. I go in and start my day with, this is what I'm going to, going to accomplish, and then you get sidetracked. But if you don't have those goals broken down to, this is what I have to do on a daily basis, then you're gonna get sidetracked, and before you know it, it's three o'clock, four o'clock, you're closing up shop for the day, you're moving on and traveling home or closing your laptop or whatever if you work from home, and you're like, what? I didn't even get done what I needed to get done today. If you break that down on a daily basis, that's the only way to try and keep you focused and for you to successfully implement those, those activities, do the work, and then get the goal in the end. The third thing is gonna be tracking your data. Why should you track data? Because you need to hold yourself accountable. You need to be honest with yourself. You need to track all of your data to make your performance more efficiently. If you're tracking all of your call data, if you're tracking all of your email data, whether you're in sales or marketing, it doesn't matter. If you're tracking all your data, the quality of the leads, where did they come from? How did I get there? What thing triggered this person to purchase? Asking strategic questions of how did you find us? Tracking all that data is gonna increase your performance. It may seem like more work, but once you build the system in place, it's gonna increase your performance so that way you can spend less time focusing on things that don't produce results to the goal that you set. So if you're supposed to make 500 calls a week or 200 calls a week, and you're tracking all that data and you can prove over a few months that doing that activity is yielding me this amount of results, but doing the other activity, maybe it's through LinkedIn, social, email, whatever, trade shows, cold visits, doing this amount of activity yields me this result and that's bigger, then maybe you should change the amount of activity that you're focusing on one area versus another. Nobody can sit here and tell you that this is what you have to do every day, no matter what industry you're in, no matter what thing you're selling, service or product, you have to do this specific thing every day from an activity level, whether it's the outreach type and the quantity. Because without data to support that, that's nothing that you're gonna get a buy-in from all your salespeople. So say, here's my goal. This is what I want you guys to do from an activity level. I'm going to audit those results as long as you track your data, as long as you put information in there that's gonna help me make a long-term decision or an adjustment or pivot, put that information in there, and then you can make a strategy adjustment. Maybe it goes from 200 calls and you're seeing success to where you say, I wanna increase it to 300 calls a day. Maybe it's 50 LinkedIn messages a day and you're seeing so much success and you increase it or vice versa. You're, you're doing too much output, not getting the results. Your time is better utilized in the areas that are gonna produce results. But if you're not tracking the data, it goes without saying you need a CRM system. If you're not tracking that data, there is no possible way that anybody at your organization, upper level management or you yourself can say, this doesn't work or this does work. You can go into it saying, I think this is going to work. We tested this with our own algorithm. I went from posting one time a day on LinkedIn and I had an idea. Hey, we see this much results. We get about 28, 20,000 monthly impressions on my content on my LinkedIn profile every single month. And I said to the team in a meeting, what if we increased it by a level of three? Now I'm not saying that our results are gonna go up to a level of three, but if we posted three times a day, what's gonna happen? Some people said it might annoy them, it could. Some people said it could increase the engagement. We could catch people at the right time because they're following so many different people. So I said, let's test it. So we tested it, we saw the results, and there was an increase. And there wasn't an increase of like 5%, there was a significant level of increase. And if you guys are thinking like, dude, I'm gonna be annoyed if I see you three times a day, that's fine. I'm, I'm not looking at a micro level, I'm looking at, how much content can we push out there and catch people at the right time as they come into LinkedIn? Kind of toying with the algorithm, but tracking the data to see it. So we tested it, it worked. We're testing it again now this month. So far, I just looked at it, the last 28 days, we have 46,000 impressions over 28 days on my personal profile. So we went from 28, 29,000 impressions to 48. So it works, but at what level does it work? Is it bringing in new stuff? So then we could dig even deeper, but if you're not tracking that data, if you're not testing it, then there's no possible way that I could say, do this if I don't have data to support it. The fourth point is going to be automate where you can. You do not need to personalize everything. You do not need to spend countless hours researching and doing all that stuff if you're trying to grow at scale. You can be strategic, you need to focus on your market, you need to send messaging that is relevant to them. Don't just send uh, blatant messages that can apply to anybody, but if you break it down by industry, these people are in this industry, or this is the thing that, the service or the product that I'm selling, this is where it's at, then I'm gonna break it down and say, I'm gonna automate where I can. You don't need to keep on sending 
one-off emails? Can I automate this and send 100 emails? Can I copy and paste things and send it to 100 people from a time standpoint? That's the way your performance is gonna increase. There may be a ton of people out there, marketers and everyone else that says, no, dude, you need to spend time really diving into it. Yes, can that work for strategic accounts, account-based marketing? Does that work? Absolutely. But if you spend a lot of time researching somebody and then you shoot your shot and you say, hey, I'd like to connect with you or hey, I'd like to have a conversation with you and they don't open it, don't read it, don't respond, don't respond to your emails, your voice knows nothing, then the time that you spent is wasted. And we're all about efficiency here. We're all about increasing your performance. So where you can, I'm not saying everything, where you can automate it using systems or using your internal team to try and leverage and squeeze as much juice out of that lemon, get as many things done in that in that five day work week as possible by leveraging your team if you have resources available or by automate using tools. You should definitely consider that. The last point is gonna be plan your content. Now you may think, I don't make content. You should be making content. Even if you're not in marketing, even if you think, what am I gonna talk about? Dude, there's things in between your ears that you know that other people don't know or may find value valuable. I feel like a broken record because I keep saying the same 15 to 20 things that people need to do on a daily basis over and over again, but changing the way I word it, changing the way I market it, going in front of the person at the right time to where they say, oh, you know what? That's just a refresher. I know I need to do that and I appreciate you creating content telling me to do that to remind me. Everybody needs to be a content creator. If you're in sales, you probably already know every person is a salesperson. At this company, every person is a salesperson not literally by title, but they all have to sell something. Either they're selling an idea to me to do something, they're selling an idea to me to stop doing something. Every person on the face of the earth is selling. You're selling to your spouse, you're selling to your kids, you're trying to convince them of things. Everybody's a salesperson. And so if you're in sales or if you're in marketing, shooting content on your own, it doesn't have to be high production level, it doesn't have to be, oh, I need to do a team for that. I mean, you can have a team produce mass scale amount of content, for the personal brand though, when you're trying to go out on your own and do all of the things to get attention around your personal brand associated with a company that you work at to provide them with a solution where you are the expert in automation, plastics, recycling, metal forming, whatever it is, welding. You're trying to be the expert in that space. You need to produce content that is engaging and educational. Shooting videos at your home office, shooting videos while you're on the road, doing videos or a picture collage from a trade show, not just doing the picture of the dude or the woman in a booth and say, I'm at this trade show, check me out. Do a video, do something cool. Take people on a tour of the trade show, show them something interesting, document all that stuff, create content, but you have to plan it out. That's the most efficient way of doing it is planning out your content saying, this is what I need to do on a weekly basis. I'm gonna shoot three videos and post them on LinkedIn. Those three videos is gonna be one topic along this, one topic along that, and a third topic that is in between. Maybe it's something where you're showing off the plant, you visit a, a customer, you're, you're going through a tour, you're at your, your headquarters and you go out onto the shop floor, you're in a meeting, you look at a new product that you're launching, you're just doing panning shots, you're doing selfie style shots, explaining like, hey, check out this product, we're so excited to release it, all that stuff is great, all that stuff will get a lot more attention. But if you're like, I don't wanna be in front of a camera ever, that's fine, don't do video, do written, but you have to plan it out. That's the only way you're gonna be able to do it. Break it down into buckets, then break it down into smaller pieces and say, if I do this, if I shoot this video, then I could chop that video up, or that turns into three different ideas, or if I shoot every single day, that'll produce two weeks of worth of content, but you have to plan it out to be as efficient and focusing on the performance of how much time do I put into it and then track the results once you post it, I think you'll see some drastic level increases. Hopefully you guys got value out of those five secrets. If you did, share this with somebody that you know. Head over to my LinkedIn and send me a connection request or at least follow me. YouTube channel has over 400 videos and don't forget, if you're down with listening to podcasts, head over to whatever platform you're listening to it on and search technical sales and marketing with me and all this content will be on the podcast. Thank you guys for following, watching and engaging with us and we will see you on the next one.